Thank you very much for inviting me and to all, all of you for being here. Let me first um, welcome all of you for this 30th World Education Summit here in our city of Chennai, in our rather wet over the last couple of days, city of Chennai. Uh, I see many faces I know in the audience and all the distinguished educators here, uh, companies, at tech companies, or uh, big institutions. Um, I think we're very excited as the home department of the ICT Academy of Tamil Nadu to partner with ELETS to uh, bring all of you together on this very important topic of enhancing today's education with essential skills for tomorrow. Uh, I'll just take a little bit of a kind of historic perspective on this. In many places I've spoken <coughs> that uh, in the old days, education was restricted to relatively few. Those who were relatively wealthy or relatively in the upper echelons of society. And um, Education was about creating uh, erudite people, about creating civilized people, of creating humane people, uh, rather than skilling them for any particular job, which was actually most of the people who went for education either were relatively not in need of a job because they came from the upper classes, or they were relatively already in a profession like the priesthood, so which there was no further filter. They were being educated to be a priest. Uh, and this is across all religions, across all cultures, I'm not just speaking about us. But as we started expanding the base of education and expecting that people would break through the hierarchy and take up careers that suited their interest and talent rather than through hereditary means, then by nature, uh, some of education started turning towards the color Africa and started turning towards skilling people for specific roles. Uh, in the case of Tam Nadu, we have had extraordinary success in some ways, particularly in the field of medicine, where we have more doctors per thousand more citizens than almost anywhere in the world, certainly more than advanced economies like the United States. We have also seen uh, some major transformations in the education of science, technology, engineering. If you look at uh, engineering in Tamil Nadu, when I graduated from what was then the REC, Regional Engineering College, Trichy, in 1987, I think the state of Tamil Nadu produced about 4,000 engineers. And there were probably, you know, 40,000 jobs searching for these 4,000 engineers. Almost anybody who wanted a job got a placement or a campus. Or, as in the case of my own career, many of us immediately left overseas and got into master's degrees or fed the graduate programs of the United States and other countries. Today, the state of Tamil Nadu produces about 180,000 engineers a year out in the available 250,000 seats or so. That's transformative change. But what that has done is led to a lot of quality gaps, if you will. Uh, the first is that from a faculty standpoint, it's very hard to go from 4,000 to let's say roughly 150 or 200,000 in 30 years, 35 years, 40 years, and make sure that you have adequate skill and adequate um, depth in the faculty. The second is, uh, there are relatively few mentors or guides for these students. Many of them by sheer math have to be first generation students in the field. And so they don't necessarily have people to guide them in terms of what subjects to take, what careers to take, etc. As a consequence, we have a situation which even in an advanced state like Tamil Nadu, even in a state where over 85% of the girls at the age of 18 are graduating high school, even in a state where about 20 to 25% of all the top academic institutions 
globally and nationally ranked out within our state, which has only about 6% of the population. Even there, we find significant gaps between those graduating with a degree and those that the economy or the companies are looking for, or those that have the capacity to be entrepreneurs or, or uh, venture creators uh, in an evolving world of technology. This is probably uh, as acute now as it has ever been because the uh, world of technology as well as the global economy are undergoing some uh, once in a generation, once in 10 years, once in 15 years shifts in the S curves of uh, the evolution of uh, various cycles of technology as well as globalization or de risking. And in that context, I think particularly the move towards artificial intelligence, the move towards prompt engineering as a major um, kind of practice. The ability to uh, mine public information that is of mixed quality and yet arrive at uh, reasonable accuracy without excessive hallucination is likely to be, for example, some skill that is in very high demand for which, to my knowledge, there's very little formal training or practice today. I think um, I read somewhere that in the next decade, roughly 14% of the jobs that are being done today will not be done either at all or by the same, in the same manner with the same skills. And that many, many new jobs um, will be required or many new skills that are not yet in practice will be required. This reflects my own um, experience. Uh, we're all somehow shaped by our own experience. Uh, our context is based on the path of our lives. In that sense, I would say that the automotive sector or heavy manufacturing for me is the primary talking. When I was a consultant on the shop floors of major industrial companies in the United States back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, where there used to be about 100 people working today, uh, working then, today that has been reduced to less than 10 people. The extent of automation, of robotics, of processing, of environmental standards that don't allow for human beings to be in the same area of, of, or of labor laws has uh, really impacted the nature of work and the volume of jobs that are there. In that sense, uh, sun change requires a lot of people to work together to facilitate efficient market outcomes that reduce the kind of dead weight loss of creating a lot of on paper graduates, many of them with financial loans that are then unable to get employment and unable to uh, you know, service those loans or improve their lives. Of course, the role of uh, academia, of academic institutions, colleges, universities, their own uh, syllabus centers, their placement offices, the role of governments where we need to facilitate and support the adaptation, the role of consultants, of, of NGOs, of for-profit, non-profit. All of us need to work together, industry regulators in some cases, degree certifiers, then only then can we try and move forward. It's particularly important for a country like India because um, I just returned this morning, in fact, around 1.30 a.m. I landed after a tour of um, Germany, France, Austria, and Greece. And it is very clear to me, both in terms of the people I met, uh, of the Indian diaspora, of the Tamil diaspora, but also of the companies I met, that India will be the single biggest source of qualified manpower to the world for the next generation. That's a good yesterday. For the next 20 years, we will represent somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of all people entering the workforce with any skill set beyond let's say a high school qualification or certification or diploma in things like um, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, etc., nursing, chefs, name it. In that sense, uh, our 
uh, roles, all of you in this room, that of me as, uh, as a minister of the government, our roles are even more vital uh, because particularly uh, in India we have two problems, one which is much more a government problem and one which is much more a joint effort. The two profound problems are that in many parts of India not enough children are going into elementary education are not getting out of elementary education because they're not getting the right support financially and nutritionally. This is a, a big loss for our country and then something that if it's not fixed uh, will really decay our future growth prospects and rates and this I've mentioned multiple times in front of the 15th Commission, Finance Commission uh, officially I happen to have the good fortune to meet the Chairman of the 16th Finance Commission uh, Professor Panagari, personally, for an extended conversation, I brought this up to the Ms. Gori. If we do not incentivize the inclusion of children of all genders, all communities, all social strata into the elementary education system and ensure they get out, the game is lost. You cannot train people who don't have the basic platform who can't read, write, do math. So that is something, but that's not mostly for you, that's for the government and from finance commissions and the allocation of money and incentives. But for the rest of us, it's mostly about taking this talent that is near adequate, because they have gone through the system, they have received the basic skills, and in general to make them employable and to more so make them employable as the needs keep changing. Now, some of this is a one-time thing, uh, because you can skill them with particular courses. We do a lot of that with places like ICT Academy. We do it at the behest of companies who want their product or their software to be widely used and to have talent in the market that is capable of doing it. We do it just as a service allowed through uh, CSR money and donations for going back to the old knowledge or the concept of education to create whole human beings rather than skills in a particular way, but humane, articulate, capable of empathy, compassion, uh, conversation, leadership. And then we also do it uh, for hiring companies in different ways to help them move the average kind of applicant home away from some distance to right at the edge of where they are capable of being employed and productive in a more immediate way. But I think some of that also needs to be the inculcation of the value of constant learning and adaptation because the market keeps changing so dramatically, so uh, unexpectedly in many cases that anybody who thinks they've uh, achieved adequate skills that will last them for a lifetime is probably at risk of uh, one day finding that they are not fit for the new market anymore. In that sense, uh, I think the attitude that I've always had in my life as a long-term student, as somebody who got four academic degrees in four different disciplines, and still probably call myself every day and that I'm a lifelong student and want to keep learning. I think that's the kind of value that we have to inculcate whenever we have a chance to influence young people. So I'd say in conclusion that uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the organizers to put this conference together, bring us all together to share ideas. Uh, I'm glad that our ICT Academy is a co-sponsor and partner in this event. Um, I know that our country has immense potential and our jobs collectively is to harness that potential by shaping it in the right direction with the right skills at the right time and the right attitude. And so I wish all of you a very uh, fruitful uh, event. I know this is nearing the end of it, so I hope you've had a couple of good days and to apply any of the things you've learned and discussed when you go back. And most importantly, to work together, all of us, to achieve this ambition and then uh, see our country and our children grow and prosper. Thank you very much.